In and out of touch, I tried to touch the hem of his garment, but it was to no avail. See, I was a mastermind at playing games. Gaming was my expertise. Changing form and formations, even strategies according to the game that was called for. See, I tried to make a mockery of the church, and they didn't even know. They're what I had called my prized possessions. Positioned to tear down and divide rather than build up and encourage. I had them in the palm of my sweaty hands. But forgive me for not introducing myself. The name is Deception, but you can call me Hypocrisy. I am the chocolate cake that you eat for dessert, covered with attitude-flavored frosting, pretense filling, and assembling sprinkles so that every time you take a bite of my luscious appeal, you come back wanting more. I am the two-facedness of a penny that Mr. Abraham Lincoln himself could not see coming. One side of me pain, the other side pleasure. Both meant for trickery with the intentions that you would, would pass me around from church to church like a dollar bill being passed around from store to store. I am infectious. Clothe me in draped fine linens of deceit and set me on high as the greatest deception of all times because I have arrived and I have set my sights on you, the church. But don't worry about Jezebel. She's just another one of my many personalities. Did I mention that I have dissociative identity disorder and schizophrenia? See, I get so paranoid that the church will find me out, that I deceive myself into thinking that I can be healed from my own sickness, approaching Jesus like the woman with the issue of blood, because it's blood on my hands I cannot redeem myself from. See, I'm not one to bargain, but here's what I will do. Like the label on a prescription bottle, I will usher out my warning. So here goes. Warning. The name is Deception, also known as Hypocrisy fraud, and mockery. Symptoms include offenses, division, pride, and secrecy. If you find that you have any of these symptoms, I would advise you to see a doctor as soon as possible because I am just this nice before I get just as evil I am offering out my warning. Get it right before I get to you and hold on tight. But wait one second, I do have a confession to make. See, I have one weakness, and like Superman, it is my kryptonite. I don't know if you guys know him, but the Christians, they call him the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He was and is and is to come. And I had to learn that because of his blood, my plans would always fail. I hear them testify day after day. It is the blood. And as I heard them testify, I cried in submission. It is the blood. See, right then and there, I realized that my plans would always fail because of Jesus' blood. So there, I had to tell myself that deception can never overcome the blood. Um, and that was a spoken word that I had done at a picnic, and I just wanted to re-record it and um, do it for you guys. Um, it's about the spirit of deception, if you guys didn't figure it out. Some of you guys got it, I'm sure. Some of you guys didn't. Um, but it was about the spirit of de deception and basically how we have the authority um, in Jesus' name because of his blood. We have the authority um, to overcome things like the spirit of deception, which causes a lot of division, a lot of strife, a lot of contention um, between churches and even in churches um, with members alone. And we have the ability to overcome it because of Jesus' blood. If you still don't understand it, and if you still are like, what did she just say? What was that? Um, and you're just clueless about the whole thing. <laughs> um, you guys can comment, feel free to comment, and um, even message me if you want to, um, and I'll explain it further and go into detail about um, what the spoken word really meant and what it meant to convey. But I hope that you guys enjoyed it, and um, thanks for looking, and God bless.